Hey guys, it's Captain John Chapman, aka Captain Chappie, and I'm here to talk about hogfish. One of the most difficult fish that people uh, have been targeting in, in recent years to catch has been hogfish. I have discovered it's extremely addicting um, when you start catching them. They taste great, they fight great, they're beautiful fish. It's one of the species that anglers and the past never really targeted. They were always assumed to be, you know, bottom dwellers that didn't really bite hook and line. As anglers kind of developed new tactics. I'd say in the past five years, it's really blown up on social media. And now a lot of people are, are really starting to focus and catch them. The first one I caught was about five years ago. Out about 65 feet of water, fishing on a ledge, fishing just shrimp. Something we always heard you need to do drifted way off of this ledge and i'm like oh well we probably should re-anchor and then i hook a fish i'm like wow this is fighting kind of crazy it almost fights like an amberjack and bring it up it's a beautiful 22 24 inch hogfish um, first one i caught stoked immediately addicted in that time i've kind of developed some new strategies and figured out new things about hogfish started Filming a lot of bottom video with the GoPro, seeing how they act, seeing what kind of bottom they're on, you know, what they eat, when they eat, how they act around different species of fish. And all this kind of plays into, you know, how I fish for them even today. Being such a difficult target, it's not really necessarily that they don't want to eat. It's that you're picking through tons of other fish. Um, so I've decided to, to kind of help people out, you know, let people know what I do, how I fish for them, what to think about when you're fishing for them. And that's what you're going to get in a little series of videos I'm going to make for, you know, hogfish 101. A little bit about hogfish. Hogfish are, are actually, they used to be called by a lot of people hog snapper. They're not a snapper. They're actually a wrasse. Um, and like most wrasses, they are hermaphrodites sequentially, uh, meaning that they start their lives as female. And then as they get bigger, they will change to males. Um, usually this is about 14 to 15 inches. And you'll notice when you start catching them off the west coast of Florida, the smaller ones you're getting are, are females. And the bigger ones are males. The, the females have a very uh, straight, more of a blunt face to them. Whereas the males, they get the elongated snout. And they end up with these gigantic mouths the bigger they get. Difference between female and male. Here's your female straight down. Here's your male long snout. Female straight, straight. The male kind of has that little bend to it. So that's a big male. Um, Colorations start to change as well. If you're catching bigger hogfish, most likely they are male. I tend to release most of the females that I catch. Just because they can produce so many eggs, there's no real reason to keep them. I, I've heard some studies show that the female mortality rate is is extremely high, which you know kind of sucks. So I try to handle them as little as possible. I'll use a dehooker, keep them close to the water, don't let them bang around too much. Um, it's, it, and it's just kind of something you have to deal with. And a lot of divers I know don't target the females as well. One thing uh, I'm going to talk a lot about is the psychology of hogfish uh, and something to consider. Is leaving the females on the bottom, there's a good chance you're going to end up attracting more males from other spots. Um, when a big hogfish is removed from a reef, they're kind of the, the alpha dominant. And so one another one will come. And one thing that will make them come is female hogfish. Uh, think about it like a bar or a club. If you're a guy and you're going out to meet some you know, nice young ladies, you're not going to go to a bar or a club without any young ladies in it. And same thing with hogfish. I think leaving those young females will help bring the males back in the future. So something to consider if you're catching, you know, a lot of females, let them go, release them. Better for the stock, better for the future. And the bigger they get, most likely they will become males. And if you're going to go hog fishing. Basically, I bring two dozen shrimp per angler per hour. Um, so that means if I've got five anglers, I'm fishing for five hours. That's about 50 dozen shrimp. You will burn through that many. If you want to cut back a little bit, you can use half shrimp, save some money. Maybe you burn through 30 dozen for five anglers in five hours. 
um, have shrimp tend to work just as well. You will have plenty of bycatch. That's why you need so many shrimp. If you're catching fish like porgies, triggerfish, mangrove snapper, porgies feed just like hogfish, eating you know baits right off the bottom. So if you're catching porgies, you're in the right zone. The biggest problem you'll run into is grunts. If you're catching tons of grunts, maybe you want to switch bait, trying to just kind of run the grunts out, drop some squid, drop some sardines if you're looking to save money, even, you know, jigs, bucktails, feathers, just kind of weed through some of the grunts. On some of the slower hog fishing days, you might be in the right spot. You might have tons of hogfish around you, but you're catching 100 grunts, porgies, blue runners, triggerfish, red grouper, gag grouper, scamp grouper, mangrove snapper, um, and more just to get one hogfish. That's not necessarily a bad thing. You're catching a lot of fish. You know, every bait you send down, you're you're hooking something. When you're fishing for hogfish, there's you're definitely going to be catching other fish. And the new regulations uh, went into effect 2017. Now minimum size limit 14 inches of the fork. And what they mean by fork is you go from the tip of the snout to basically the middle of the tail. Don't include the edges, the extensions of the tail to the fork. And bag limit in the Gulf of Mexico, five per person per day. And that's this is Gulf waters where I fish. Atlantic side, one per day, 16 inches of fork. And I believe the fish have a much longer closure, which is listed here, open from May 1st to October 31st. Same rules apply federally, hogfish known as uh, in one of the reef species, minimum size 14 inches, five per person per day. A good hogfish day, you're catching maybe half dozen, you know, decent sized males. A great hogfish day, you get into a school, um, you know, maybe 20, 25, 30 is, is about as good as hog fishing days as I've, I've seen. Uh, when they're in the middle of the spawn, that's when that's possible. But even then, release the females, give them a chance kind of help the species. Um, so basically what I'm hoping to accomplish is, is let people know, you know, where hogfish live, kind of psychology of, of what I think hogfish are thinking about, what makes it possible to catch, you know, good numbers of hogfish and rigging, you know, what am I doing to, to maximize my chances for, for catching hogfish? How am I rigging? You know, I'm using lots of jig heads. Uh, these are the product I make. Well, I'll get into that in the future. And then, you know, how, how am I hooking shrimp that I think makes a difference? You know, what are other people in the boat fishing for I think that makes a difference? You know, how other fish are acting? What are the gag grouper doing to the hogfish? What are the mangrove snapper doing to the hogfish? I think it all plays a part when you're trying to catch something very particular like a hogfish. So stay tuned.